Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this rather cold fourth Sunday in Advent. I'm glad that you made it through whatever was plowed in front of your driveway and made it here safely today. I'm glad you could worship with us. Thank you to the choir, too, who uh, braved the elements to come bring us music. Um, I don't know that I had a, have a lot of introductory remarks, so I invite you to, oh, I do, I forgot for a second, we have to light the Advent candle. And we were expecting a different Johnson family, but there is another Johnson family available to help us with the candle lighting. Advent wreath. So, we need fire from up there. There you go. I don't think I stepped on that yet, did I? All four, all, all four blue ones. Yep. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. In your son Emmanuel, you have shown us your light and saved us from the power of sin. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Increase our longing for your presence, that at the celebration of your son's birth, his spirit might dwell anew in our midst. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And I invite the congregation to stand, and we'll sing together all with this hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. He is a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ by his authority, and therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our musical offering.
Thank you. In our first reading this morning, an Israelite and Aramean armed uh, military coalition present a serious threat to King Ahaz of Judah. In response, Ahaz decided to secure his throne in the kingdom by seeking refuge in Assyrian help. The prophet Isaiah reminds Ahaz that human attempts to establish security will fail. The prophet gives a sign of Emmanuel, that is, the only source of true safety. God is with us. In the second reading, most of the, Roman, uh, most of the Christians in Rome do not know Paul. In this letter's opening, he introduces himself as an apostle divinely appointed to spread God's gospel. The gospel's content is the promised coming of Christ, and Paul's mission is to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations, including those in Rome. We hear the, word. the first reading is from the seventh chapter of Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shoal or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to worry to it is too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse evil and choose good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Please join me in Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth that you are enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. The second reading is from the first chapter of Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets and the holy scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness, by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
she will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just a little trivia to begin the sermon. Um, the Old Testament readings are always chosen with the gospel reading in mind. Um, so, of course, we have from Isaiah's reading what is fulfilled, what is pointed to as being fulfilled in Jesus' birth in our gospel reading from Matthew. The second readings are less connected to the gospel readings. They kind of hover around and, and follow themes, but they also are consecutive readings very often. This week, our epistle reading from Romans works really well connected to our gospel reading because it is about demonstrating the obedience of faith. Think about that phrase, the obedience of faith that Paul uses. He says... Find my spot. We have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of Jesus' name. Obedience of faith. We usually think of faith as a trust, a confidence. That was Luther's great emphasis in the Reformation. Trust and confidence. What is the obedience of faith? I think Joseph, in our gospel reading today, demonstrates what the obedience of faith, active in love, I'm going to add a couple words to kind of flesh it out a little bit, what obedience of faith, active in love, looks like. But I want to get a little bit of a running start at it and share with you one of my favorite Bible stories because it also demonstrates Jesus showing the obedience of faith, active in love. It's from John's Gospel in the 8th chapter. It's a story of the woman caught in adultery. And the reason I like this story is how Jesus responds at the end of the story. Not because she is brought by the crowd, the crowd that wants to inflict vicious punishment on her, but because of how Jesus emphasizes the importance of the law and also points us to love. So from John's Gospel, early in the morning, Jesus came out of the temple. All the people came to him and sat down. He began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, making her stand before all of them. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that, he might, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Jesus kind of walks a, a narrow path there between seriousness of the law of Moses, the Old Testament law, and love and forgiveness. Jesus says, I do not condemn you. You are forgiven. But don't go and do these things again. Because Jesus takes seriously the law. In Matthew's Gospel, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, do, you not think, do you do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets? I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 
For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. A little farther down, he says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We're reminded to take seriously the Old Testament law. We don't just toss it out and ignore it. The woman caught in adultery, according to the law of Moses in Deuteronomy, should have been stoned, along with the man with whom she was caught. It's written in the scriptures. In the very same chapter where we read, you shall not wear clothes made of wool and linen woven together. So what will we do? What will we do about the law? Joseph provides us an example about taking the law seriously, but also being reminded that love is the fulfilling of the law. Joseph is engaged to Mary, as you know. And she's, we were just told, she's found to be with child. How was that discovery shared? What were the thoughts of family? What was the thought of Joseph's family? We can only imagine. We're told Joseph was a righteous man. And on first hearing, to be righteous would have been one who kept the law of Moses, who kept these laws, like we read just after the thing about woman caught in adultery should be stoned. If there is a young woman, a virgin, already engaged to, to be married, and a man meets her in the town and lies with her, you shall bring both of them to the gate of the town and stone them to death, as it's written in Deuteronomy. A righteous man at first reading would, would be zealous for the law, would see to it that it was kept. But Joseph does not. We're told he was unwilling to expose her to public disgrace or even execution. The plan to dismiss her quietly. But that's not the end of the story, is it? Because God calls Joseph to something even more. So let me slow down. Backtrack what we're hearing here. We're reminded in the scriptures, in a number of places, Sermon on the Mount and other places, that we are, take, we are to take seriously the laws of the Old Testament and the laws of God. We're reminded as well that the laws are fulfilled in love, in mercy, and in forgiveness. But we're also reminded that God can call us even deeper, even beyond our first inclinations of love. And here's the significance of that teaching. Think with me for a minute about all the ways in which Jesus' birth could have been messed up. Joseph and Mary might have decided, we're not going to make that trip down to Bethlehem. It's too far. Mary's pregnant. Mary, approached by the angel, might have said, I can't do this. This is too much for me. Joseph might have said, I can't do this. This is too much for me. But because Mary is faithful and Joseph is faithful, the families involved are faithful and go beyond their initial expectations, beyond what they thought would have at first been possible for them, the Messiah is born. The Messiah Jesus is born. How did God bring about the birth of the Messiah? It could have gone wrong in so many ways. But the birth of the Messiah is brought about through the obedience of faith active in love. Joseph demonstrates that, that for us. When he marries Mary, even after the bad news that he's heard, and coming to a decision other than God's. He follows God. He's obedient in his faithfulness. So here's where the rubber hits the road for you and I in the 21st century, 2,000 years after this story about Joseph. We too are reminded to take seriously the law of God and are reminded that it is fulfilled in love 
But how will God bring about the fulfillment of the kingdom of God in the world in which we live, in the world yet to come? How will God bring about the fulfillment of that kingdom? Perhaps it's exactly the same answer. Through the obedience of faith, active in love. Through us going beyond what we think is possible for ourselves, trusting in God. Could we possibly love our enemies? Just an easy example from Jesus who says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Could we possibly do that if we were obedient, in faith, active in love? I think we could. And I think God wants us to be obedient through faith, active in love. God wants us to be part of the fulfillment of that kingdom. God wants us to be part of the proclamation of Jesus Christ. A proclamation that Jesus believed and the apostles following Jesus and the church fathers following them and Christians through the centuries have believed can change the world. You are called to be part of that. That proclamation, that message, that work for God. Joseph provides us the example. Mary provides us the example. Jesus provides us with the example that we are called to follow. To stretch ourselves in ways that we might never have imagined. Trusting that God will see us and meet us. And through us, work for the good of the world. Thanks be to God for Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. And for the Holy Spirit that is given to you. May we be obedient in faith, active in love. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we anticipate the fullness of the presence of Christ, we join with the church throughout the world, praying for all who are in need. For the church universal and all servants of the gospel, for poets and artists, for musicians and preachers, for theologians and teachers, and for all those of our congregation that this week observe the anniversary of baptism, Riley Clark, Robert Austin, Holly Kutz, Carolyn Moore, Todd Lentz, Mary Weir, Alexia Joe Monday, Cameron Roska, Michelle Roska, and Nicholas Bumgarner that all proclaim that Christ is with us, that God is with us in Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all plants and animals, seas and skies, snow and rain, and all of God's marvels, that all of creation grow and thrive as we bless, protect, and use with care what God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations and those in authority, for peace and justice throughout the whole world, and for those who advocate on behalf of others, that all in positions of leadership choose what is good for the community. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the thirsty and hungry, the weak and fearful, those in childbirth, those who mourn, and those who are ill. We pray especially for the family of Vernon, the family of Irene, Sandy, Judy, Linda, Ron, Sue, James, Terry, Rayanne, Carly, Patty, Linda, Robert, Preston, Steve, Fern, Diane, Gloria, Melvin, Kathleen, Sandy, Kathy, Phyllis, Judy, Elaine, Maddie, Betty, Paul, Connie, and those who name now silently or loud. that they know Christ the Anointed One, who dries up every tear and comforts those who suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who travel near and far, for those who prepare our congregation for worship and celebration, for those who gather around word and sacrament, that all experience welcome and refreshment. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have died and now are at rest, that the promise of their faith point us to the promises of grace and resurrection in Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, those spoken aloud and those known only to you, and grant us peace through Jesus Christ, our coming Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters.
as we prepare for communion, the usual reminders, please fill in the welcome pad, our record of attendance and communion. All baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table. And we sing our song as we receive the offering. Hold on, will you write me Please stand as you're able and let us pray. Savior of the nations, come. Make your home here in us. Feed us with your love. That our faith shine ever new and our lives reveal your light. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. 
Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. Share in the feast of salvation. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
given to you. Please stand and let us pray. God, for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the wine we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in the world, announcing your coming among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Announcements. I did. felt like I was missing something. Um, as people are making their way to the announcements, um, I will announce, I got a call this morning that uh, Verna Sigelkow had died overnight. And so uh, please remember the family of Verna in your prayers this week. There will be more information about that as the week proceeds.
Good morning. Um, social Ministry Giving Tree. Um, there's envelopes on the tree. Um, I was informed this last week that the foundation has accepted my grant request for matching funds up to $1,500 for each one. So if you haven't picked an envelope off the tree yet and consider putting money into it or a check, please consider that because every dollar that you give will be doubled by the foundation. Um, after you take an envelope, put an ornament in its place and you can put the envelopes in any of the offerings or bring it to the office. The last day we can take the money is by the end of the 27th because by noon on the 28th the checks have to be written and handed in. So we need to have every dollar account for that um, grant request. Thank you. I just want to let you know that the sign-up sheet for readers and greeters are out in the back for January. And as you go by, please sign up. It gives me an easier job to do. Thank you. Thank you. And you're still looking for the readers for 10 o'clock on Christmas Eve as well. Is that right? Actually, I have your, your, your sheet over here. So. Good morning. First, I want to thank everybody for braving the weather and showing up today. I was Pleasant concerned, surprise. yes, it would be <laughs> Pastor and myself. Uh, that's right. Um, there is good news, though. Winter is three days away, officially. <laughs> so, oh boy. But I always try to look for a silver lining. Yeah. Our letter and, carrier really loves winter. I yeah. know. <laughs> well, you know, the days stay lighter longer after the first day of winter, so there is good news to no, that. Yeah. I always got to look for a silver lining. <laughs> um, I did want to talk about our TV ministry. Um, we're getting kind of low on monies to support that. That is not a budgetary item, and so if anybody would like to make a contribution towards the uh, TV ministry. Uh, Ryan, are we still rolling? Um, this is a shout out to everybody that watches uh, the TV ministry. If you would like to make a contribution towards that, that would be uh, welcomed. It costs us about $60 a, a, a showing uh, a service. And so we just would like to get that account built up again. Yep. So. Gifts, just designate your gifts to TV ministries made out to St. John Lutheran Church. We'll make sure that that gets into that designated account. Okay, that's all I've got. Thank you. Very good. Let's see, there's notes here about Christmas uh, office hours. The office will be closed this week, Thursday, and the following week, Thursday. Um, but you, you'll notice there also is a note about uh, when to get gifts in if you want them counted toward 2016 contributions. The weather's been kind of tough the last couple of weeks, and next Sunday is Christmas Day. We'll be here, 9 a.m., Christmas Day, but I know that that has an impact on our giving when the weather keeps people away and when holidays happen and all these sort of things. So please remember your gifts to the congregation. Just a reminder then, Christmas Day, 9 a.m., Christmas Eve, 5.30 at 10 o'clock. 5.30, the 180 group has provided special music for us. Uh, 10 o'clock uh, will be Voices for Christ. Uh, no communion at Christmas Eve services this week, but we will have, or this year, we will have a, a, a service of lessons and carols, lots of Christmas carols. We'll have candle lighting and uh, get to sing the, the Silent Night candle light on both of either of those Christmas Eve services. So, Christmas Eve, 5.30 or 10, Christmas Day, 9 o'clock. Uh, you can read through the rest of the things that are here unless you want to bring something else specifically to our attention. All right, I invite you to stand for our sending song then.
Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.